Please join me in a, in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you come and you speak to us through the power of your Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We ask, O oh Lord, this morning that you would open our ears and our hearts to receive all that you have for us so that we can grow in our faith and be your lights in the world. We put ourselves in your hands, Lord, as we do this, because we do this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All right, where, do you, where is that expression out there from? Cell phone. Cell phone. Which one? Verizon. Verizon, okay. And what this guy does, he carries this cell phone around, right? And he goes up on a mountaintop, and can you hear me now? And he goes into a, a valley. Can you hear me now? And he goes into a basement. Can you hear me now? And he goes to a mall, you know, all over the place. The idea is that Verizon will help you do what? Hear reception from people everywhere, right? That that cell phone, that carrier, Verizon, will connect you with people everywhere, right? That's the whole concept behind the deal, all right? However, sidebar, be careful. If anybody calls you up on the telephone and says to you, can you hear me now, hang up. There's a little scam going around out there, and it's not a good thing. So if somebody calls you and asks, can you hear me now, click. That's what you do. That's a sidebar. All right, a little help. But the idea is to listen. <clears throat> this morning, did you come to hear God? Did you come to hear God speak to you? To speak into your life? To guide you? To comfort you? To direct you? to speak to you. Is that why you came? Mmm. I would love to have a video camera right now of all your faces because you're all thinking about this. You see, today, I dare say, there are many, many Christians who come to worship on Sunday morning and they don't hear God. <clears throat> Here in Emmanuel, you have a worship service that's put together by Pastor Schneider and Cindy, and it's well done. Pastor Schneider writes a lot of this liturgy, puts a lot of Bible verses in there. It's contemporary-minded. <clears throat> it, yes, has traditional flavor to it, so it's well-balanced, it, and it gives you opportunities through the liturgy to hear God speak. Through the organ music and the songs that are sung, you hear God talk to you through the lessons that are read, right? God directly speaks through his word into your life, through a message. At least when Pastor Schneider does it, you get to hear God, right? Through choirs, even though sometimes pastors don't let them sing. But, you know, <laughs> they get a chance to speak to you, right? The choirs do, and the prayers, and, and all of that are all opportunities throughout this hour time that we have together to hear God. How are you doing? Can you hear God now? Or is it too noisy? You see, God, 412 times in the Bible, uses the word listen. That's a lot of times. In the Old Testament, he spoke through the word and through prophets and told the people of Israel to listen to him, right? To be guided by him, to change their ways, to listen to what he had to say. And he gave them commandments and covenants and directions right in their lives. Sometimes in miraculous signs he did, right? How did they do? How did they do? Not so hot, right? They didn't listen. And that's why God sent them into the Babylonian captivity, allowed the Assyrians to come in and smack them from the north, the Egyptians come in and smack them from the south. You know, I mean, they just got run over all over the place, right? Because they didn't listen. In the New Testament, the word listen is used 75 times, and Jesus tells his disciples to listen. And he gives his message in kind of a unique way. He uses what? 
parables. What are parables? They're stories, right? They're heavenly stories with an earthly, or earthly stories with a heavenly mission, right? That's what they are. How many people really listen to them? What does Jesus say? He says the Pharisees and the other scribes and all those people, they didn't really want to listen to the message. They just heard these crazy stories and they walked up saying, oh, that guy's a nut. He talks and what's the deal with this? It's parables, you crazy stuff, right? And then he gathered his disciples after they left and says, now listen. Listen here. This is what the meaning is of that story I just told. And he goes through the parable and he explains it to them, right? That's what he does. He tells stories because people don't want to listen. Today in our culture, how many people are really listening to God? I mean, there's so much craziness going on. There's so much junk that's being produced and, and through our, some of our universities and some of these philosophers and stuff that's going on today. I mean, we are undated by words and ideas and thoughts that have nothing to do with God, Right? And so many people are swallowing that stuff hook, line, and sinker and going off because they don't want to listen to God speak. It's too tough. But in our culture today, you've got Bibles everywhere. You go to a hotel room, pull open a drawer, and there's a what there? A Bible. You go to the bookstores, and you go to the grocery stores, and you can buy a Bible. You go to a drugstore, and you can buy a Bible. They're everywhere, right? We are inundated with them, and yet how many people are really reading them and listening to what it says to be guided by it, right? The noise out there is deafening. Last, two weeks ago, Friday, uh, you know, if you know, my sister-in-law died, and so after the funeral was all over with and the reception and all that stuff, people came back to the farmhouse. And so my boys had come out, and Barb's sisters and brother were there, and, you know, everybody and their, their kids get you know, all descended on the farmhouse. And so we had 30 people, some odd, in the kitchen at the farmhouse. Can you imagine what the noise level was in that farm kitchen? Woo! Way up like this. I ran out of the room eventually and went to the bedroom, pulled a pillow over my head. My head was just, you know, because of all the noise. Wedding receptions. I asked Pastor Schneider if he goes to wedding receptions. Well, that's his business, but I don't go to wedding receptions. I go to there to eat. Thank you very much for the nice food you have. And then I leave. Why? Because they crank the noise up, and you can't talk to anybody. If I have to sit at a table and try to have a conversation with someone and say, can you hear me now? I don't want to do that. And if you're laughing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You go to banquets, you go to celebration, they crank that blooming noise up, or the noise in the room is so deafening you can't have a conversation, so why even bother? Right? The noise level is so high today, you can't hear anymore. Sometimes it's that way at church, too. Some places you go to and people talk all the time. They talk through the service. They got their cell phones going, and they go blink, blink, blink off and all that kind of stuff. Turn your cell phones off. Right? You know what I'm talking about. We have all kinds of noise out there. And it prevents us from hearing God speak to us. And God wants to speak to our hearts and into our lives. He wants to share his love with us and his grace with us and how forgiven we are and how he can guide us in the right paths and, and do the right things and correct us when we're going the wrong way. And sometimes he has to kick us in the butt, right? To move us in the right direction. That's what he wants to do. But if we can't listen to what he says, we're going to miss it. So here's four things that can help you. First of all, have a quiet time. How many of you have a designated time every single day where you are just plain quiet before God? Wow. Six of us. To hear God, you sometimes have to just be quiet and listen. Set aside a regular time in your day 
Go to a place, Jesus says, go to your closet to pray, right? That's one of the things he says. And what I'm thinking what he means really is go into a place where there's no distractions. And that's the second thing. But back to the quietness, just let it be quiet before him so that you can really hear him. There's a little kind of poem. Hello, God, I called tonight to talk a little while. I need a friend who'll listen to my anxiety and trial You see, I can't quite make it through a day just on my own. I need your love to guide me so I'll never feel alone. I want to ask you to please, to you please, to keep my family safe and sound. Come and fill their lives with confidence for whatever fate they're bound. Give me faith, dear God, to face each hour throughout the day and not to worry over things I can't change in any way. I thank you, God, for being home and listening to my call, for giving me such good advice when I stumble and fall. Your number, God, is the only one that answers every time. I never get a busy single, and I never had to pay a dime. So thank you, God, for listening to my troubles and my sorrow. Good night, God. I love you too, and I'll call again tomorrow. Just a little poem about having a quiet time before the Lord. But the number two thing you need to do is get rid of the distractions. My 19-year-old granddaughter uh, goes to college now, and when she came home one time, she had to do some study on a paper. So I went into her room and see how she was doing, all right? She's got a TV on. She's got her computer on in front of her. She's got her cell phone going where she's FaceTiming. You old people know what FaceTiming is? You young ones do, though, don't you? Okay, okay. FaceTime, all right? She's FaceTiming somebody, and she's got ear sets on, and she's listening to a CD. How in the world do they do this? But they do. And she's sitting there writing her paper, and I look at the paper, you know, over her shoulder, and it's pretty good. I mean, she's writing a nice paper. She's listening How with all this stuff? And she can keep track of it all at the same time. But sometimes I wonder if they really are hearing, really getting the message, or are they just doing drive-bys and trying to pick up along the way whatever sticks? You know what I'm saying? Now, you old people don't think you're getting by with a pass because, you see, what some of you do is you think... What distracts you is your pride. You think you know it all already. Nobody can tell you anything. You've already been there. You've done it. You know it. I I don't care what you say. I already know it. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens, you see. And the middle-aged people, you people don't get a pass either. Because what happens is you're so worried about struggling and who you are and and growing and climbing up corporate ladders and stuff like that that you don't hear either. So everybody's got a problem with these distractions that are out there. And there are tons of them. Right? Get rid of the distractions. Focus. Concentrate on what God is saying to you. We need it. The third thing is you've got to let the Holy Spirit speak. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity that guides us and directs us. As we saw in that second lesson today, the Holy Spirit guided St. Paul and his, his followers to go where the Holy Spirit wanted them to go to present the gospel message. Sometimes we get promptings in our lives, don't us, don't we? We get promptings to make that phone call. We get promptings to put this down and go over here. We get promptings because somebody comes up to us. We've got to listen to those promptings of God and follow them. There's a big thing going on here at Emmanuel right now that we need the Spirit guidance in every way he can work. You know what that is? Huge thing happening here. You know what it is? What? Calling a new pastor, a new senior pastor. Do we need the Spirit's guidance for that? Do we need his direction for that? Does the call committee that you've called and established here, set up here, need the Holy Spirit to guide them and direct them to the right person to lead here? 
Come on. Yeah. Anybody here from the call committee? Anybody here on the call committee in this service? Okay, there were some of the other one, other services. But right now, we're going to stop a moment. We're going to pray for the call committee. Heavenly Father, we just ask right now that you would pour your spirit down upon each of those persons on that committee. Lord, get them out of the way, their own personal lives. Let them hear you speak as they, as they interview candidates and as they read resumes and as they talk to people, oh Lord, your spirit just touch their lives. Check them, O oh Lord, if they're going in the wrong direction. Bring them back to where you want them to be. Enable them to know exactly that this is the person you have touched and you want to be called. We put them in your hands, Lord. We look forward to your grace and your mercy leading because we do this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. The Spirit's really got to lead, doesn't he? Absolutely. It's climatic for this place right? We need the Spirit every day to lead us in our daily lives, wherever we're going, right? All the time. You can go in the wrong direction and get in really serious trouble if you don't let the Holy Spirit direct and guide you. That's why God gave us His Word. That's why Jesus comes to us through that Word and challenges our lives if we're going in the wrong way, comforts us when we need help, encourages us when we're going in the right direction. Oh, yeah. Let the Spirit speak. The last thing we need is to follow God's promptings. You know, God prompts us all the time, doesn't he? He prompts us through all kinds of people, through all kinds of circumstances. Do you listen to those promptings in your heart? When God prompts you to reach out and pick up that phone, do it. When God prompts you, when somebody comes up to you and, and you say, oh, I don't really want to talk to this person, but that person is coming up and starts to share with something, listen. Be there for them. Let God's promptings guide you and direct you. I always used to, after, I don't, thank God I don't have to go, and I told Pastor Dan, I'm so grateful I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to go to meetings anymore. Yahoo! I just get to have fun in ministry. But when I used to have to go to meetings, some of those meetings were God-awful meetings. I mean, they're just horrible meetings. <laughs> I, you know, and so you know what I would do after I'd go to a meeting? The next day, I'd go visit the shut-ins. If you ever want to get blessed, just go visit some shut-ins. And when you go visit them, guess what they do for you? They speak into your life. They bless me more than I ever have blessed any shut-in visit ever in my ministry. I get more blessed. And I walk out of there, yoo -hoo! <laughs> Oh, yeah. I get energized going to visit them. Because God uses them to prompt my life. Who does God use to prompt your life? Who can God put in your path? as you listen to them to encourage you and lift you up? Who can God show you his life through to know that you're loved and cared for? Oh, yeah. And then, who can you be for somebody else as you listen to them, as you comfort them, and let God's Spirit flow you, throw you into their lives. It's a wonderful art to listen. To listen to God in quietness, no distractions, with the Spirit's prompting through His Word and through others. Be blessed as you listen. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in that same Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.